Hello and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I think we're on like number 82 or something. We'll see. Check the title. The title of the video will be correct, not me now. Um, it is Monday the 24th of August. I am at home just being productive at the moment. Um, just finished up yesterday, the uh, last day of the Art Centre exhibition. So, um, so we've got that done now, which is very exciting. Um, I'm meeting up with some people there tomorrow to take the exhibition bits down and also to work on like some funding bids. Um, and I'm currently reading As You Like It by William Shakespeare. I've only just read the introduction, but it's this Folio Society edition. Uh, they're really beautiful interiors, look. But um, it's got illustrations in it, like they all do. Um, and the illustrations come from like a predict particular production. And uh, this one was apparently illustrated by a chap you've probably heard of, Salvador Dali. Apparently, <laughs> it doesn't look much like Dali's style. Hello, bit of a slow day today really. Just been working from home, I did my work, my walk earlier. Um, I read Star Over Bethlehem and Other Stories by Agatha Christie, or Agatha Christie Mallowan as she's credited here. Actually the second half of it is just poems, which is one of her poetry collections obviously, which I've read before. Biggie's meowing. I also finished, uh, so I gave that like 3.5 out of 5, it was very religious. It would it would make a good uh, Christmas present for an Agatha Christie fan though. And I also finished As You Like It by William Shakespeare, this was like 3.5 out of 5 I reckon. So now I am reading Cymbeline, which is a much longer play of his, and I've just finished reading the introduction on that, so that's what it is. And I'm off to the Arts Centre tomorrow for another Arts Council funding meeting. Needy cats being needy. What, what do you think will happen when I pick up this bag of marshmallows? What do you think will happen, Biggie? Hmm. You doing the loud purring? Hey, you doing the loud purring? You're gonna purr to the internet. You're gonna tell the internet you love them, Biggie. Stop eating my marshmallows. Stop eating my marshmallows. Daddy's still reading uh, all's, all's Well That Ends Well, except I'm not reading that, am I? I'm reading that other one. What am I reading, Biggie? As You Like It, that's the one I'm reading. Uh, I should have probably known that, considering I'm near the end. Been to the Art Centre today for a meeting about setting up some grant applications, so I'm gonna be working on that. I've done a few other bits. Set up an email today, move some exhibition bits. And yeah, all is good, really. Uh, I don't have anything else to update you on, really. Just been a busy day. I went for a walk earlier, posted some stuff. Uh, I'm going to do some housework this evening, possibly have a relatively early night. I've also started relearning uh, German. So, je parle un peu de français, mais je ne parle pas plus l'allemand. Yeah, je ne parle plus allemand. I don't speak German anymore. I used to. I haven't got anything else to update you on, so I'm going to go and be productive now, I guess. Ah, I'm being nudged by a feline. Oh no, now he's attacking the string. Hello, it is Thursday the th 27th of August. I'm just fixing a minor cock up because I accidentally posted something from the art center that I wasn't actually ready to post, but never mind. <laughs> we were gonna post it on Saturday, it just means I posted twice today. But, uh, Biggie! Um, so yeah, anyway, I've been super mad hard at work all day working on um, some a, a bid for Arts Council funding. I wonder if anyone's emailed me back yet. I don't think anyone's looked at it. I kind of don't blame them because it's like 2,000 odd words I wrote in the end. Woo! But hopefully we get funding um, and it's like an emergency grant so we have to have the, uh, it has to be submitted by a week tomorrow. So yeah, this band was practicing earlier and I spent like three and a half hours working on that. But that's why I shared this post accidentally even though I didn't mean to <laughs> because I was trying to schedule it to go out and I accidentally, I just wasn't paying attention. So instead of scheduling it, I just posted it straight away. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to care. Not too much. Um, 
Uh, what have I got to update you on? Okay, so I finished reading, um, Biggie, you're sitting on it. I've finished reading Cymbeline by William Shakespeare. This is probably, I've got to say, it's probably a three out of five. Um, they, it did say in, in the introduction, kind of warned me about it, that um, there's a lot of build-up and like the Queen, who's like one of the main characters in it, doesn't really get introduced until like act two or whatever. So there are a lot of these like minor characters towards the beginning who are literally inconsequential to the to the play. So it's kind of a, a slog to get through. And it's also quite, quite a long play as well. But I did at least finish it off, so I'm happy about that. And then next up, I'm gonna pick these three up probably. These are three that I got in the post. So I got The Pretty Boys of Gangster Town by Martin Gray. This is a poetry book. Uh, the Goddess of Macau by Graham Hall. So these were both sent to me by Cuckoo's Nest Press by Isabel Kenyon. So thank you to Isabel for that. And then I also got Verdict by Agatha Christie, which is a which is a play, four women and six men. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that. I also have to haul those books. Uh, oh, and Saturday I'm going to visit my mum in Tamworth, so that will also be good. Hello. I am watching Star Boot Sale on Netflix. It's a reality TV show where a bunch of celebrities go to car boot sales and try to make some money, basically. I mean, it's garbage TV, but I am kind of enjoying it. I was at the Arts Centre earlier, um, so we've I've finished pretty much finished off my bits for this Arts Council um, a bit. Oh, there's Biggie coming in from the curtains. Hello. Do you want to be in the video as well, Biggie? Yes. Oh, Biggie Bum. Biggie Bum. So, um, so yeah, so I've been there earlier. I just need to finish off tidying my ha house now. Then I'm off to my mum's tomorrow. But I think the main job is hoovering. So I'm going to try and hoover before it gets too dark and shit to hoover, you know. So um, that is the plan. I have some books to update you on, but Biggie's sitting on them. But I finished reading The Pretty Boys of Gangster Town by Martin Gray, uh, which is a poetry collection from Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. I will be doing a full review of that. I did rather enjoy it. And now I'm currently reading, what's it called, Biggie? The Gods of Macau by, um, I can't see his name, I'm sorry, Graham Hall, uh, which is short story collections. Uh, and it's really fascinating so far, because it's very, like, um, like Spanish-influenced and Macau-influenced and whatnot. Hello, you got a fluff ball still. Ah, ah. He's attacking me. I'm also wearing my Phenomenots t shirt, which is my friend's band, so that's very cool. And I got some books from the book exchange at Tesco today, too. Including a book for my friend's kid. Alright, I finished reading The uh, Goddess of Macau, and so um, I'm now about to pick up my next book, which is going to be Dance Macabre by Stephen King, because this is the only unread Stephen King book that I currently own um, and I like to I tend to read quite a lot of Stephen King while I'm traveling um, and this is about 400 and yeah about 450 pages um, I might actually take a backup as well because I don't know whether I'm going to enjoy this this might become my next bedtime book because it, it is non-fiction it's a unique combination of fantasy and autobiography of classic horror writing home to an unforgettable edge so it depends whether I enjoy Stephen, Fil Stephen King film criticism, basically, I guess. So uh, I'm gonna, just going to come over here now and select what should I take instead, just in case. Okay, we've got a plan. So for my backup, if I don't enjoy that, I'm going to take out um, the Howard Marks Book of Dope Stories by the author of Mr. Nice. So I'll have both of these. I've also got a couple of shorter books. I still want to hedge my bets, you know, because that also might turn out to be a bedtime book, but a lot of my unread books might. Okay. I'm also going to take Fellside by M.R. Carey, because um, this is, again, another reasonably chunky one. It's been on my list for a while, and um, I've really enjoyed M.R. Carey's stuff in the past. So I think between these three books here, uh, surely at least one of them, at least one of these is going to be uh, enjoyable. <laughs> Even if the other two end up on my bedtime reads list or whatever. Hello, new friend. Hello. Hello. You're not going to hiss at me again, are you? Because that was mean. That was very mean. What's your name? What's your name? Hey, what's your name? I'm going to call you Kit Kat. Yes. 
Oh, I know. It's nice to get a bit of fuss every now and then. Nice to get a bit of fuss. <laughs> you can't come inside, though. But it's been very nice to meet you. Goodbye, then. Bye-bye. You don't live here. You don't live here, Mr. Cat. All right, well, I befriended the, the neighbor's cat. This is my mother's garden. It's looking very nice. She's got this new shed. This is where I get me inspiration for my garden from. Maybe one day I'll do a full tour. <laughs> We're at Bletchley. Or well, more specifically, at Bletchley Park in Bletchley. My mum's back there somewhere faffing. There she is. When war was first declared, one of our first actions was to cut Germany's cables. Huh. That's clever. He was the radio guy. Mm. Indeed. Hell of a now. Double the rest of the year. Look, that practically unsolvable thing. Only one person managed it. Miss Clarabel Sperling. Which one's she? Middle front. Her. <laughs> She was the only one who managed it. I've got a list of the frequency of German words. How many of these words do I know? Well, I know Alf. Und. <laughs> That's not surprising. There look stations right up there. Artillery, night. So it says Churchill was sort of well aware of what, which means maybe he got his thing of working in the bath from Dilly Knox. <laughs> Some of the pneumatic tubes. Yeah, open these. Including two children. There were 20 men. London was hit for the first time in May. The random nature of their attacks had an effect on England. Okay, that, that's interesting. There's documents over, over there. Yeah. Rare surviving examples of an intercepted en enemy message and an attempt to decrypt it. A note written by the wireless operator explains that a nearby burst of machine gun fire drowned out two letters of the intercepted message. By the end of the war, hundreds of civilians have died from bomb raids. Moving war forever beyond the kind of insane. So it was saying over there, the airships dropping bombs killed about 2,000 people. The U boats sunk 5,000 ships. So, I'm guessing the uh, Zeppelins were very effective, were they? No prior experience to Air defense tied up nearly 17 So, this is the encrypted telegram. 
wherever they were posted, I knew the crowd level. They menaced the Eastern Network. One single Zeppelin could carry over wow. 100 bombs to create intense fires below. To modern times, the cumbersome cigar shaped rigid wow. bombs were almost comic. But their effect so they were going to help the Mexicans to take back half of America. Of America. Yeah. No, President Woodrow Wilson, speaking the day before the publication of the telegram, he said, if you knew what I knew at this present moment and what you will see reported in tomorrow morning's newspapers, you would not ask me to attempt further peaceful dealings with the Germans. Just call her a translator, mate. Well, at least they have roles. These ones don't have roles. They've just got their rooms. I don't know. Those are. That's the, the grey dude. One way to uh, keep safe online is for websites to make sure that their visitors are real human visitors by getting them to complete a completely automated public touring test. How did that look? First commercial Enigma machines were produced to make financial transactions secure in banks. Modern banking also uses encryption technology. This is where they store the punch cards. How often do you use the internet? <laughs> How often do you use water, electricity or public transport? They all depend on the internet. Does public, tr I mean, I don't know about that. They do now, but they haven't always, have they? <laughs> Okay, how easy is all of this to find online? For me, pretty easy. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> that wasn't very encrypted. Someone tries to listen to the audio, it's encrypted. Ah. So that's what they did. Hello, can you hear me? Very cool. It's malware over time. Number of new types of malware per year, over 80 million in 2013. That seems like too much. Careless talk costs lives. I have them, it's coming from this, it's an accordion player, look, it's part of the exhibit. It says, in the summer there was boating and in cold winters the lake froze over, creating a skating rink. I like this. I recall when our boss, Josh Cooper, walking along the side of the small lake with a cup of coffee, suddenly threw up his hands, pitched the coffee cup into the water and shouted, I've done it. He had in fact broken a German code from which valuable information was gleaned throughout the war. Photo of when the lake froze over. 
Well, I imagine it would be a good place to be if you were a single guy because there were three women for every guy here. It was like my uni. Staff having a snowball fight. The work that took place at Bletchley Park was necessary for national security, but does sharing our personal data today increase our safety or sacrifice our privacy? I think it does a bit of both. Are you gonna vote, Mother? Yes, you definitely do. Today. <laughs> I have been watching my pet while I'm away. Okay, that's all right. Well, I'm gonna, vo I'm gonna vote yes because I think it's ambiguous. So that's the that, that's the first fit bit when it used to clip onto your waist as opposed to being a wrist tracker. I'm quite surprised by the results of this one. Sharing my biological and medical data helped me lose three stone. <laughs> it's also helpful when my clients determine that he's susceptible to a certain type of cancer, so he gets regular checkups. A photograph taken from the sport shows members of the Government Code and Cipher School temporarily gathering at the mansion in August 1938 under the cover name of Captain Ridley's shooting party. Just before war broke out, they re returned to BP and were joined by others who responded to a coded message, Auntie Flo is not so well, ordering them to assemble at BP. Look at that. Look at the phones. Mm -hmm. Commander Denniston. Yeah. Bell to summon the servants. Oh, the library, yes. Here we go. Careless talk may give away vital secrets. Right, what have we got? Have I read any of these? Three Musketeers. Oh, a Christmas Carol, I've read that one. <laughs> Kipling, there's, there's got to be some, some Agatha Christie somewhere. Priestley. I found the heart of the matter by Graham Greene. That's a cracking book. Kidnapped, read that, hated it. The billiard room. Could get a sneaker table in here. Oh, I fancy that. Nice game of sneaker in here. Blimey, this, this smells like old as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I was photo with, with Willie Church. Hang on a minute. Bid him for the first slot. Started at five grand. What's that in today's money? Probably less than it's worth now. Wow, wow. Look up. Yeah. The original 1937 sale brochure. So we're gonna go and look at the bombs, which are... Ooh. These bad boys. British prisons are blocked by the police. The 
frustrated by changes in general. In a race against time, a communications arms race, a race to save lives, the number of arms that he was a was brief the film over a total of two hours. And the exit is between two other people disappearing between the two. We've got to try and turn it into F. And there was a few words that I say was shit. And it's fair. There you go. So the world's first computer was over there. The Germans are waiting gassy. Hello, I'm back in High Wycombe. It's currently quarter to one in the morning and I'm very tired, but Biggie's here. He's happy to see me, aren't you Biggie? You're happy to see Daddy. Um, so yeah, my mum's in Wycombe as well, but she's staying at um, a Premier Inn or a travel lodge or whatever. Um, but I'm still slaving away here at the moment because I haven't finished making tomorrow's radio show. I've actually finished most of it now, so I'm just listening back through it and making the tweaks. Uh, it's two minutes too long at the moment as well, so I need to cut two minutes from somewhere. Um, but I think I can do that okay. Can't I, Biggie? Daddy can do that okay. Uh, so, yeah, what did we do? Yesterday, well, okay, I should take you through the whole thing, really. Um, so I went to, I travelled to Tamworth on the Saturday. I basically woke up, did my last few bits of uh, housework. Uh, hopped on the train and uh, went to Tamworth. Stayed at my mum's house, so I got there on Saturday. And uh, we pretty much just chilled that evening, really. Um, so, ow, you little shit. On Sunday, um, we went to see my grandparents. Um, so that was nice. And they gave me some money, actually, because they'd had um, a rebate on a, an insurance thing. So they gave both me and my cousin, uh, like, some of the money. Um, because they basically said... It was actually quite bleak, but they were like, it's going to end up with you anyway. So I'd ra they'd rather give it to me now so that they can, I don't know, I guess see us enjoy it or whatever. It wasn't like a huge amount of money, but um, it was very much appreciated. And it, it's, just, it's enough money that it'll make a big difference, you know. Um, 
and actually for me I'm pretty much going to put it straight into savings because I'm going to hopefully try and save up and buy my own house um, but it's looking at about £200,000 is like the cheapest I'll be able to get a house for around here which is in dollars that's about $250,000 something like that um, and that'd be for like a one bedroomed house with like a living room, a kitchen, uh, a bathroom, a bedroom and a little garden you know but that do me nicely and the idea being is like I worked out I've, since I've lived in this place because I've lived here for five years I've paid my current landlord about £50,000 and it's like that's a quarter of a mortgage if I'd been paying a mortgage instead of rent I'd own a quarter of the house as opposed to just having nothing you know so the idea being that then I can do that and if in five ten years I decide to move somewhere else I can rent it out as well and kind of cover my costs that way so we will see we will see what we will see um yeah so anyway then after that we went to for lunch at the Longwood which is this pub it was actually kind of disappointing because I looked at the menu before we went getting all excited about what I was going to eat and then they'd ran out of stuff so the only thing they had they had vegan lasagna which is what I went for or they had just vegan sausage and chips um but I was my main my first choice was it was like a mushroom pie thing and then my second choice would have been the moving mountains burger and they were out of both of those but oh well uh went home watched the imitation game went to bed woke up today and uh, we went to Bletchley Park so that's what all the footage you've seen is of um, so that was really nice um, and our tickets are valid for a year as well so we can potentially go back which we might do in the spring um, so yeah and then tomorrow well I've got to finish editing this radio thing and then I can finally go to bed then tomorrow we're going to meet up around lunchtime um, going to Marlow which is where I used to work and we can go for a nice little walk along the river there look in some of the charity shops if they're open uh, and then I'm going to go show my mum around the art centre. We're also going to go to Asda to get me a load of uh, um, um, compost for my garden. Like, we're talking industrial amounts of compost. Um, because otherwise I have to keep bringing them back from the shop and it just busts my back, you know. So, um, probably like, yeah, nine bags of compost or something like that. Might go, might go to the farm shop as well. And then we'll probably have dinner t tomorrow evening and then she's staying and then heading back the following day. So I'm kind of not really working, but I am working a bit. Um, I, I also need to update you on um, the books that I've been reading. So I will endeavour to do that as soon as I can. And um, yeah, I should really be finishing the, the vlog here, but um, I might as well wait until my mum's gone home, you know. <laughs> Hello, it is uh, Tuesday the 1st of September, the biggie cat is behind me. Um, I went off today to, uh, whatever, I went off to Marlow with my mum, so that was nice. So we went for a walk along the river and went into some charity shops, so I have some books to haul for you guys. Just showing you a little bit around the garden because we also, um, we went to Asda and I spent £30 on compost and plants. <laughs> um, so I've been working in the garden a little bit today. Uh, and then I took her for a tour around the art centre. I'm now back home, it's about five to six, and about quarter to seven, I'm gonna head off because I'm gonna go and meet her for lunch, uh, dinner, whatever, so that'd be nice. Uh, and then I'm gonna head back here and crack on, and then she's off home tomorrow. So uh, it's been lovely though to spend some time with her. So I have some books to update you on. I read um, the Bletchley Park Souvenir Guide, which I'm totally counting as a book, uh, even though I don't have it anymore because I gave it to my mum after I was finished. I actually read it during our way around. I gave it like a four out of five because it had some pretty good information in it. Um, and yeah, it was good for what it was, about 50, 60 page little booklet, well book, uh, about Bletchley Park. I also finished reading Dance Macabre by Stephen King. A uh, full review of this coming soon, as you can see. But uh, spoiler alert, I enjoyed it, four out of five. Um, it's kind of... A little bit grounded in the time it was written because it came out in the early 80s so he talks about like this new band called the Ramones and stuff um, and he's talking about like horror throughout the ages and it's still interesting but it's obviously missing huge swathes of modern horror because it only goes up to like the 80s and, and he also has like contradictory opinions about The Shining because he he praised Kubrick's vision of The Shining then he bashed Kubrick's like interpretation of it and then at the end, he recommended The Shining as one of his horror movies, and he put an asterisk next to it to say it's one of the best ones. So I'm really confused, because like King famously doesn't like The Shining, so I guess he's changed his mind a bit since then. 
Hello, I've just been for my dinner with my mum. Yeah, the walk there was a lot longer than I remembered, so it took me like an hour, so we ate quite late. So it's now uh, half ten, I'm back home. Uh, I did some more work on the garden as well, and as I say, I have some bo uh, books to haul for you. But I've got a couple more to wrap up and then we're going to, uh, or to let you know about. So I read Paws and Claws, an anthology of cat poetry in association with the Cats Protection League. This was okay. Uh, it was actually, I think, released first in the 90s. I don't know, just the poetry wasn't particularly like cutting edge or anything. So the, it, it wasn't really the kind of poetry that I liked. But even for like just standard rhyming poetry, it wasn't particularly good. Uh, the illustrations were good, but that was about it. So I gave it a three out of five. And um, now I am reading something I picked up. Uh, Instructions for British Servicemen in France, 19. No, no, Instructions for British Servicemen in France, 1944. Reproduced from the original, prepared by the Political Warfare Executive, and issued by the Foreign Office, London. So, um, yeah, from the Bodleian Library, the University of Oxford. And it's uh, very fascinating so far. As you can see, I've tabbed it out to do a review. So that's coming soon. But yeah. That pretty much brings you to the end of this week's reading vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. As always, don't forget to hit the uh, like button. Leave a comment if you've read any of these books to let me know which ones you've read. Uh, hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.